Today, we're going to be looking at some common mistakes that designers make when setting up either their tokens or their variables, including one, having too many variables, two, improper token definitions, three, ignoring accessibility, and four, ignoring responsive tokens. Let's get started. All right, so the first big mistake I see when designers are creating their tokens or their variables is that they simply create too many. As you can see right here, I have five components. So we have a text area, uh, an input, an autocomplete, something like a search, a button, and then a menu. What I see a lot of is component-specific tokens or variables. So I notice here right off the bat that all of these are in their disabled state. You know, they're not active. They're this gray color signifying to the user that they're, that they're not able to be clicked or not able to have anything entered into them. And despite them all having the exact same background color, I see that they're defined at the component level. So as an example, a surface disabled text area, a surface disabled input, a surface disabled autocomplete, a surface disabled button, and a surface disabled menu item. This can simply create a lot of confusion. Again, they're the exact same color. And when you're working within your tokens or your variables, it can be really difficult uh, to tell them apart if there's no name uh, necessarily attached to them. The alternative of this is to create global uh, tokens or variables. So as an example, instead of having to define them at the specific component level, if they're all the same color, why not just tie them back to one token or one variable? So in this case, our surface disabled. So notice how we just went from five different tokens or variables to one token or variable. So again, it's really important to streamline your tokens or variables if they're used for the same purpose or the exact, and they are the exact same color. Also, you know, a ton of brands have an, a bunch of awesome different colors. You know, if we're looking at the UI Collective brand, this could be a color wheel for us. Um, but again, there's really no need to necessarily put together all of these different colors right from the get go. You know, it's totally fine uh, to work with colors, just four or five or six even to start and then build up from there. You know, one thing I have seen a lot of is designers tend trying to find specific use cases to use every color in their color wheel. I've seen uh, specific cases where one component might be leveraging uh, this color right here. Let's flip that around. And then another component might be leveraging this color. Again, it's almost like designers are often looking for excuses to use all of their different color tokens or variables, but it's totally fine just to keep it as simple as possible. When I'm working with a lot of new designers, uh, especially those who are new to building out design systems, my general recommendation is if you're working with um, in your brand and you're just building out your little color matrix, you know, start with five or six colors. If you need to add more later on, that's totally fine. It's totally okay to be adaptable. But uh, when you're first starting out, there's really no need to build, build out uh, a color matrix with, you know, 10, 15, or even 20 different colors. Another mistake that I see that designers make when building out their tokens or their variables, which is closely aligned with the concept of having too many variables, which we already looked at, is improper token definitions. Now, the most common example that I see is relating to gap variables and padding variables. Let's take a closer look. So here I can see that I have my scales for my gap variables and my padding variables. And what do you notice? They're literally the exact same scale. You know, your extra, extra, extra small for your gap is two, and your extra, extra, extra small for your padding is two. All the way down the line, two, four, two, four, then to eight, then to eight, to 12, to 12, so on and so forth. Now, when you're going to apply these variables to specific elements within your UI, look what happens. So here I just have two cards, and I'm just going to select both, right click, uh, or shift A, sorry, uh, add some auto layout, and let's apply our gap variable. And let's say for this case, I have a gap variable of 24, and let's say maybe I wanna add some horizontal padding. And I'm gonna apply our padding variable of 24. Again, because in my variables, wrong collection, uh, we have a gap variable, you know, our large of 24 and our padding variable of 24. So what I essentially just did is I created some uniformity where you have a gap of 24 and a horizontal padding of 24. Again, the exact same value, but I use two different variables. Way too complex. Why not just use one? So what you can do is combine them into something you might call your spacing variables. So it's not specific to your gap variables or your padding variables, but they are more holistic. They can cover both. So now, if I was to create the same layouts, 
Actually, we got to add our spacing variable. So let's create a variable. Let's go with a number variable spacing uh, large. And let's set that to 24. Let's select both. Shift A. Let's add our spacing variable of 24 for our gap. And then for our horizontal padding, let's add our spacing variable of 24. So what I did is I essentially just achieved the exact same UI using one variable instead of two. Now, if you're building out a design system, whether it's a one brand design system or multi-brand design system, you would be lying to say that accessibility is not on your mind. However, a big problem that I see is that designers don't actually start actioning on accessibility until they're too deep down the rabbit hole. You know, maybe you've built out all your tokens and all your variables, um, and you've already sent some components to dev, or there's already some design to production. That's usually the, oh my gosh, I should really think about accessibility. That's when that moment ten generally tends to enter a designer's mind. However, if you're building out your tokens or variables, you should be thinking about accessibility from day one and taking it into consideration from day one. It is not something you want to do six months down the line. It's something that as you're building out your colors, you should be checking as you go. Prime example, when you're working with something like disabled states, and this is a real life example of something that I've seen, is a designer saying, you know what? That looks like a good color for a surface on disabled. I'm going to use that. And that's what they roll with. You know, there's not a whole lot of testing that comes into play. So when you're building out all of your uh, different color tokens or variables, whether it's your surface tokens or variables, your text tokens or variables or whatever it is, it's always a good idea to have a couple sample components uh, with your tokens or variables applied so you can see and test how, how all the different colors complement each other or do not complement each other. So when we're looking at uh, surface on disabled, just as an example, I have some elements here, you know, some buttons, some pagination, you know, a card with a disabled button in it, a button group, uh, each with a surface on disabled applied. And I can see that that is BC, BC, BC. Now, I see that the text is white on that disabled button. And again, let's just say for an example that I'm building out a design system for the first time, and I'm simply testing whether this color would work. I can go to online color contrast checkers and see that if my background color is BC, 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 and my foreground color, so the color of my text is white, this does not meet our contrast ratio, which should be uh, WCAG AA. Usually, that's generally the golden standard. So what I can do is say, hmm, this color combination for my surface on disabled token or variable isn't correct. Let's adjust it. So then I can go in to my surface on disabled and let's make it a little bit darker. And I can see how all the different components react and how the elements either complement that or don't. So now let's test with 8C, 8C, 8C. Let's close that. Let me open back up our contrast checker. And I can see that that works for large text and graphical elements, but not necessarily for normal text. So let's make one more iteration and let's maybe make that a little bit darker. A little bit darker. There we go. And let's say for this example, 676767 would be our surface on disabled. And I can see that all our components adjust with it. Now, if I open back up our contrast checker, I can see that now it passes our WCAG AA standards. So again, when you're building out your tokens or variables, it's always a good idea to have some pre-built components. So as you're applying your tokens or variables or making changes to them, you can see how your components react and test the accessibility color contrast as you go along. All right. Lastly, another big mistake that I often see designers make when building out their tokens or variables is not taking into consideration responsive design. If you're working with component specific tokens or variables or things like your spacing variables, which we reviewed earlier on, you know, it's really important to take into consideration how these might uh, change or react when dragged into different modes and working with different device sizes as well. Again, a spacing of 24 on desktop might not necessarily work for mobile because it might push things too far down the fold of the screen. So today we're going to look at the idea uh, of how to mitigate that for something specific to spacing. Uh, our spacing variables, where we're going to look at creating jumper variables. So what are the variables that are set uh, when you're on desktop, and then how they transition onto something like a tablet. Now, what you're probably thinking is, why can't I just set a mode for that? You can, but there's actually a little bit more that comes into play when doing so. So let's take a closer look. So first thing I'm going to do is open up my local variables. I'm going to create three collections, our brand, 
our alias, which we're not actually using today, and our maps. If you're unsure about what these collections are referring to, I'll leave a link in the description for creating advanced color token library video uh, where you can dive a little bit deeper uh, into each of these. So we're gonna re rename this first collection to brand. Let's create uh, an alias collection, which again, we're not using today because we're not working with colors. So we're actually skipping over our alias for our spacing variables when working. So we're just gonna go from brand to mapped. And then let's create a mapped collection. So again, we have a brand, an alias, and a mapped. So let's open up our brand and let's create just two spacing variables. So, oops, not a string, excuse me. We're gonna create a, a number variable and this will be our large. Again, so this defining the spacing what it, between our elements on desktop, we're gonna set that to 24. And then let's create a medium variable. Oops, not a mode quite yet, excuse me. And then let's create another number variable. We're gonna call that medium. And we're gonna set that to 16. So ideally what that spacing would be uh, between our elements on our tablet. Now again, we're skipping over alias because we're not working with colors. And then we're going right to mapped. Now, this is where we actually define the jumper variable. So I'm going to create another number variable. And I'm going to call this large to medium. What this variable will be saying is that our first mode will be large. And our second mode will be medium. So it's showing the progression between the two. So if you're taking elements between them, you know exactly the type of variable to apply. As an example, if I'm going from maybe let's say I have uh, a mobile frame here and I need to take that into a desktop frame, it would be small to large. So it's defining the transition between them. I'm gonna reopen up our local variables. And what I'm gonna do is tie, actually just rename mode one to desktop large. Oops, excuse me. And then let's rename uh, this to tablet medium. Go lowercase just to keep the cons things consistent, actually. Large, there we go. And now let's tie those back to the variables in our brand collection. So I'm gonna set that to large, and I'm gonna set this to medium. So again, what this allows us to do is that if we do need to make changes to our large spacing uh, token or variable, our meeting spacing token or variable, again, creating your tokens or variables is all about being responsive, changing as things as you need to, uh, you don't need to go through each of the individual elements and change those numbers. What change on the brand level will make that change uh, throughout. Now what I'm going to do is now that we have these defined, so again, our large to medium. So I'm going to apply this variable when I'm going taking something from a large to a medium. And I'm going to go ahead and apply these variables. So I'm going to select all three. Shift A, add some auto layout. And let's just focus on the gap for now. And I'm going to apply the variable, again, our large to medium. Now, I can see that this is set to 24. Let's just make sure that Figma knows that this is set to our desktop. We get auto as our desktop. Well, let's just set it to desktop. And now let's drag these elements into our tablet. Again, we're going from a large to a medium. So this should change to 20 to 16. And the reason it's still 24 is because I need to define uh, what that value is. Oops, I noticed a quick spelling mistake here. Tablets, let's change that back. And I can see that when I change that, that our gap adjusted to 16. So when going from a large frame to a medium frame, um, this is the variable that you would apply. Again, creating your jumper variable. So when you're going from large to medium, you know, large to small, medium to small, medium to large is a real great way to take into consideration responsive design when building out your tokens or variables. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. I invite everyone to join our 100% free Slack community for on-demand Slack support for things like your design tokens, design system, Figma variables, whatever it may be. And we also have some great free resources, including the free copy of our UI Collective design system, our design system guide, and much more on the way. Hope to see you online, UI Collective.